hi everyone. Today I have Paul Wakefield with me. Paul is an expert who's uh, helping hundreds of students, uh, entrepreneurs, business people who want to have successful businesses and they want to transform or they are transforming their passion into successful business. So Paul, how are you? Yeah, evening Shaquille. I'm really good, thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. Uh, you keeping safe? through this corona crisis yeah i am mate i am it's just um just another normal day for me if i'm honest i've been working online for 14 years or whatever it is so uh yeah it's just another normal day but all staying well thank you hope you are too yes uh, i'm good thank you yeah difficult time but yeah we have to probably uh it's a time where uh we need to rethink everything again um, our businesses, our lifestyles, and how we do things, and mm. uh, sometimes probably you need such things to uh, kick you in the butt. Definitely, <laughs> and I agree. Right, right direction. So, yeah. without wasting any time, please tell us about yourself. What do you do? How you help entrepreneurs and coaches? Cool. So, yeah, as you said, my name is Paul Wakefield. I'm born and bred in High Wycombe, just outside of London. I've been in business since 2006. Um, I first launched a traditional consultancy practice. I've been a consultant all my life, 20 plus years. Um, within 18 months of doing that, I had the office, I had the staff, I wrote a five-year business plan and all the usual stuff that uh, we're advised to do. And then within 18 months, uh, I had to close that business down, made three people redundant. Uh, I lost my house, my home. I was financially, mentally and physically broke. Uh, I was homeless for six months. Um, I was then very fortunate then to be offered a, a, well, I say eventually a sofa. I slept on the floor for most of it, then eventually slept on a sofa. Um, and I started again. Uh, I launched the business again, October the 26, 2008. I had mm. £2.87 in my bank account. Um, wow. Thanks to my neighbor who allowed me to use his uh, Wi-Fi connection. Um, I used that randomly searching online uh, i come across a, a webinar and the guy was said that he was talking about digital products and joint ventures so this was the summer of 2008 at the time i had no idea what a joint venture was and i certainly had no idea what a digital product was uh went on this webinar and it blew my mind absolutely blew my mind completely different way of doing business um finished that took things into my own hands i thought well i've got nothing else to do being heavily dyslexic, I'd only ever read my first book, age 28. So writing something and creating a product was pretty difficult. But mm. what I wrote about was the problems and the mistakes that I made in my first business. Um, and before I knew it, I'd written a 172-page Word document, turned that into a, a, an ebook, a digital product, went on a search for people to find out who would be interested in working with me. I made a list of 50 people. I emailed them. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to cut a long story short here, uh, arranged a joint venture with a guy. Um, and on the 26th of October 2008, like I say, I, uh, I'd done a webinar, a webinar with Tim, launched the business, sold the ebook, sold 128 copies and made just over six grand in profit. Mm. Um, that was the start then of me realizing there's a completely different way of doing business. Um, and then a few years later, that ebook, I was then offered a publishing contract for a book called No Excuses, No Limits. Um, that was published in 2012 within two weeks. That was on sale in 27 different countries. I got a ton of media, uh, lots of PR. Um, I've then gone on. I've now wrote a couple of other books. I'm a best selling author and a few other books. I'm now just writing my fourth book. Um, and wow. I've now I've now built a business, a global business for myself. I've got clients in 11 different countries. I travel the UK training. I, I train at least three, three and a half to four thousand people a year at live events on how to start um, and grow a coaching, consulting, training and speak a business without spending a penny on advertising. It's the exact same process that I used back in 2008 and it still works to this day. Wow, uh, inspiring story, uh, really impressive. And uh, that, that gets me to the point which I really wanted to discuss. See, mm. there are so many online gurus and mostly what they're doing is they are targeting 
the people who are already successful. Yeah. Like, and then they're telling them how to double, triple, or 10x your business. Yeah. And yeah. I really wanted to talk about, like, there's so many people, perhaps they're entrepreneurs, perhaps they are, you know, consultants, perhaps they mm. are uh, doing a, you know, good job, but they always felt that there's more and they have passion. That's where most people struggle. So when you're telling your story, uh, I really liked it that you were well, you have a couple of quid in your bank account mm. and you're using your neighbor's internet and you started. And so you have all that knowledge, all that experience, how to start from zero and take it to uh, you know a mega successful level. Mm. So let's get into it. So tell me, well, what are those tricks? So someone sitting here, suppose I am, a consultant i want yep. to have a successful online mm -hmm. business so what are the steps how can i create a successful business in shortest possible time okay uh, the first one i would say is to really understand and own your story um, okay. what i mean by that is you know i find that a lot of people go into business now doing what they've done when they had a job there's a lot of people out there now that aren't business owners. Mm -hmm. They haven't got a business. They've got a glorified job without the glory mm. because they're doing what they've done when they had a job rather than having a business. So for me, I would say the first thing that you need to do, once you understand and own your story, what you need to look at then, and I say to everybody, write down free hobbies, free interests, and free life experiences that there will give you nine potential businesses that you can start easily out of those right. nine narrow those nine down to three things three things that you really love doing then when you've got those three things narrow it down to the one thing that you are so passionate about that it's going to relate to your story it's going to relate to your why it's going to get you up out of bed every single morning it's going to make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up that then is your business right so j just to uh, rewind it three hobbies yeah three experiences uh, and free life so three hobbies free interests and mm -hmm. free life experiences right that's nine options and then narrow it down to three narrow it down to three and three then that you love and then narrow yeah. it out of those three narrow it down to the one that you can look at and go, that is what I'm really passionate about. That's what my life has been about. I've been so, a consultant all my life. Um, okay. Sorry, go on. So that, that's step one. But could it be anything? Or is it, does it yeah. need to be? Because what, what I see, there are you know, hundreds of niches online. Niches, yeah. you know, something specific. But everyone seems to be repeating. Like, for example, if you go online, everyone is online marketer. Right. Yeah. Everyone is online guru, online consultant. Yeah, so can it be specific if someone is, for example, is interested, you know, their life passion is spirituality. Yeah. Can that be a business? Easily. Uh, someone else. So uh, I, I've, be, yeah, I've helped people. Sorry, Shaquille. So I've worked with people that have interest in um, remodifying old cars. I've, well, I've worked with dog groomers. Um, I've worked with artists. I've worked with musicians. Um, oh my God! You name it. You name it. I've I've worked with them. Uh, football coaches, ex golf pro. Um, you name it. You name it. So I've it, worked with it. So it could be anything. So that that's our first step. So we have our message, our passion finalized. Yeah. This is what it is. So what's next? Yeah. Mm. It's really understand. And as I said, you've got to understand and own your story. Hmm. The reason why I say that is because your story is what's going to attract the right people to you. It's also going to allow you to build a trusted, authentic, reliable, personal brand. Mm. Too many people out there are copying people. There's too many people out there that want to be, uh, I don't know, Russell Bronson or Gary Vaynerchuk or Frank Kerr. They want to be these people. Mm. And then they wonder why they fail because they're trying to be somebody else. I spent 28 years of my life trying to fit in and be someone who I'm not. When I understood that and I understood who I am, 
what I'm about, my life changed. I'm now 43. What mm. people need to understand is that this fingerprint is ours. Mm. There's only one of us, only one of us. Until you are prepared to be your true, authentic self, it's not going to happen. Stop trying to focus on being everyone else. That is why it's so important to understand your story. When I first started speaking on stage in 2008, I told my story. My story used to start when I started my business and how I failed, become homeless and everything else. Now my story goes back to when I was six years old or five years old, starting school, hating school, being bullied, getting involved. I had a drink and drugs addiction, leaving school with no qualifications, being heavily dyslexic, having counseling, suffering with depression. Absolutely everything. I had a huge, huge panic attack when I was 21. I died. I was dead for 30 seconds. I got brought back round. Luckily, mm. I'm okay. Got no, no damages. I live with anxiety now. When I started having counselling at 21, they said that I'd been having living with anxiety since I was 12. Everything that I do is related to my life experiences. And if everybody looks at their life, they will have a huge impact throughout their life that they can use on their story. And that is the journey of where they are now and who they are. They have to own that. I see so many people struggling to get clients all the time. And it's because they're not being true to themselves. They're trying to get people to buy into this next get rich thing or the next big golden shiny object. I don't want that. I want people to buy into me. It's about the why. People buy the why, not the what. I think this is... Uh... You know, the things you're talking about, it's amazing how this just makes sense because I, I agree. Like everyone looks into, uh, you know, Russell Brunson or uh, Ty Lopez. Everyone wants to be like them, have, yeah. you know, millions of pounds in their bank yeah. and cars and homes and everything. And they miss the simple point. And probably because some people or most people don't understand how to market it. The they next don't. step. They have yeah, no they, idea. They, yeah, the thing like the things which are already in or people have other people have made money doing this. So I would do the same. And then they yeah. try to target everyone. And that's why, you know, around 95, 98 uh, percent businesses or new ventures fail. Yeah. So, yeah. So I always say when, when I speak with my students, uh, I say you have to have a niche. You have to have your passion as a niche. Yeah. And it could be absolutely everything. Yeah. Because if you look at this way, if there are, let's say, 100 people, there's got to be one, two, three, or four or five like you yeah. who would resonate with your message. And yeah. then you have you scale. Like, that's not out of 100 people. What if you target, you know, 100,000 people? What, what if yeah. you target 1 million people? Exactly. So, so that, that's the game. If you have a niche, you know how to. And we understand marketing, so we'll get yeah. into that as well. So yeah. let's say we have looked at our story we have looked yeah. at our passion and everything now we know what is our message what we want to teach people what would be our course or yeah. what would be we would be speaking on stages about so what's yeah. the next step contact make a list of a hundred podcasters who are in your industry contact them and get on that show send them an email don't big yourself up never talk about yourself Contact the people who own the podcast and just say, hi, I've been listening to your podcast for a few months, a few years now. Absolutely love it. These two episodes were great. They really resonated with me. Just wanted to say thank you for the value that you put out there. Really appreciate it. It's had a huge impact on me. Um, this is who I am. Uh, if you wanted to stay in touch or maybe one day get me on this show, happy to speak some more. But thanks ever so much for what you're doing. Get yourself on those podcast shows. When you're on those podcasts, you are sharing your story. Mm -hmm. These top 100 podcasts have a massive audience. Mm. There's the number one strategy there. Share your story, get on podcasts, and tell people. Okay, the... for, for, sorry, for, for no, some sorry. people, they, they might not know how to find these post podcasts. So is there mm. some easy way to do that? Mm. Yep. <clears throat> Pick up this thing. Where's the camera? Pick up this thing, this phone that we all live on. Go into iTunes. 
um, or podcast, whatever it is. Um, you can search for your niche. So mm -hmm. if your story is related to spirituality or business, whatever it is, sports, whatever, there are hundreds of podcasts out there all over the world in all industries. Follow them, subscribe to them, start speaking to them, follow these people on social media um, and start literally stalk them in a friendly, stalky way. Um, mm. Build up the relationship um, and then reach out to them. The biggest problem that I see with a lot of people these days is they don't have patience. You know, mm. we are in a results driven industry and everyone wants results now. Ain't going to happen. Be patient. Be patient. Yeah, this is so strange. Like people, if I, if we look at our, uh, I'm the big, biggest criticizer of uh, our edu educational system. Like you mm. spend 15, 20, 12, 10 years getting education and in the end you don't really learn anything. It's no. just generic knowledge. Yeah. But same people when, when you th they try to develop a business, they're looking for quick result, two weeks, three weeks, three months, yeah. and that's yeah. it. And they yeah. give up. Oh, this is not going to work. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> patience, patience. So okay, we are on to the next step, which is uh, podcasters. Yeah. Uh, so search the podcast. Uh, yeah. Go. On. Yeah. So you search them, get on their shows, build relationships up with them, and get on their shows. Now, once you're on their shows, you only need two or three of those to be recorded. Get on all hundred for mass leverage, but you only need two or three initially. Once you've got those, because although you're telling your story, each podcaster is going to ask you various different things. Once you've done that, you will get the recording of that podcast. There's your mm -hmm. audio product. Take that audio product. You can very easily and very cost effectively get that transcribed into written text. You can go onto somewhere like rev.com and you can get that transcribed into a written text. Mm hmm. Once you've got that, there's a written product, there's an audio product. If it's something like this, it might even be a video product as well. Mm -hmm. There's your first digital product that you can sell. You can sell that for £47, £100, £200, whatever you want. It's 100% profit. You can sell it over and over again. Once you've, right. done, once you've done that, the whole purpose of that is because you've told your story to that audience, there's going to be certain people from that podcast audience are going to come looking for you. They will relate to you mm -hmm. and you can sell the digital product to them. Also, once you've got the written product, again, create a nice little simple digital ebook. You could break it down into sections. Could be seven pages, 12 pages. You might make a full 30, 50, 100 odd page, whatever it is. But there's a written book that you can then sell whether it's digital or whatever, you can then turn that written text and you can and you can turn it into a physical book. Let's like say this one is I was offered a publishing contract. My others I self-published. Okay, so now we're talking about, okay, the second step, we con uh, connected with the, all these podcasts that we got recorded on their shows. Yeah. And now you're saying that obviously we need to have some kind of product or service yeah. to sell to the people who uh, listen to our inspiring story and they want more they from want us. More, they want more information from you because okay. the, people, the people who listen to podcast number one will probably be different to the people who live, uh, listen to podcast number three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's going to be an audience there who are going to come. So that gives you your first product, written, video, and audio. That's your first okay. product. Probably I'm jumping ahead, but right. there's a bit of technicality. Like I recorded this, so this is one of my course, or this is one of my product, or I've written a book, ebook, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. But how am I going to sell it to the audience? Uh, you can either set up a free website on um, WordPress. Wix.com, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or the best way is to set up a Facebook group. So Facebook right. groups right now. So about a year ago, obviously, most people know that Facebook ads have been and have and probably always will be right now the best advertising platform on the planet by far. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what you're doing, 
they ain't going to work and you're going to lose a ton of money. So Facebook realized this. This is why organic reach on Facebook pages dropped down because mm -hmm. obviously they, the organic reach has dropped down because Facebook wants you to spend money. Yep. But they also realize that a lot of startups and small business owners are using Facebook to grow their business, but they don't mm -hmm. have the money. So mm -hmm. about eight months ago, maybe a year maximum, uh, good old Mr. Zuckerberg announced that they are going to be pushing Facebook groups. And they are going to make Facebook groups one of the biggest and the best features on Facebook which is okay. why suddenly in the last six months, every man and their dog has set up Facebook groups. Set up a Facebook group and start building your tribe. So if you do that before you get on these podcasts, you can say to people, because at the end of every podcast interview, people are there, the interviewer will say, where can people find you? In turn around and say, well, if you go onto Facebook, you can find me on X, Y, and Z. It's a Facebook group and you can join the community. Mm-hmm. You're then building your tribe and building your community. And the good and thing when, we've been... Sorry, yeah, Shaka. Yeah, yeah. So when people register there and become part of the group, and then you can offer all your services and products. Yeah, and you just keep giving have... value. Keep giving value. 80% of the stuff that I do every day is free. I give 80% of my stuff away for free. And that's where people go wrong. Yeah, they, they want to charge for everything. but also. Uh, one of the things I realized quite early on was, you know, I thought some of my valuable advice or courses or stuff which I teach, uh, I shouldn't offer it free. But then I realized, like, if, if even if I create videos of everything I know, mm. all the knowledge I have, people don't really pay you to create those videos. They pay you to bring everything together, if you know what I mean. So even if I start delivering, you know, YouTube videos, Facebook posts or videos or recordings like this, and then I have an interesting stories, probably I'm changing the topic here slightly, but Facebook groups, what I thought with this, you know, podcast or interviews, I wanted to interview top, you know, 100 people all around the world in different areas. And that's why you're here, Paul. Thank you very much for being here. But one of the power of you talking about podcasts, one guy got in touch and he he said, uh, please do my interview. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about marketing and sales and other things. And I looked into the well, what he does. And he's, he owns a group, over 35,000 entrepreneurs in the UK. Really interesting group, but he's struggling to manage it and he's struggling to monetize it. Oh, because he's probably man. just created, just created uh, it as a hobby and shared a few things, but now he's offering me to come on board and help him manage that group and let's do some joint venture. So what we're talking about here is opportunity. When you get to speak with people, you get onto podcasts, when you interview people, yeah, exactly. these opportunities arise. Exactly. So, so groups are amazing. So I mean, realistically like that, I mean, especially in this industry, from day dot going back, everyone will say it's the, the money's in the list, i.e. build an email list, mm -hmm. okay? And everyone says the money's in the list. It is to a certain extent the money's in the relationship you have within the list. Mm -hmm. The first thing that he should be doing out of that 35,000 is getting them onto a mailing list. Mm -hmm. If he had a mailing list of 35,000 people, realistically, you should look at every person there there's a value of at least a pound or at least a dollar wherever your listeners are. That should literally be a 35, 30 to 35,000 pound a month business that he sat on there. Yeah, no, that's a great thing. Uh, probably I'll be admin of that group really mm. soon. And I already have plans to put something in place. As you yeah. said, free value upfront. Definitely. We want to give Definitely. as much value as possible and probably we'll do yeah. uh, mm. another interview with you later on. And probably you can be, you know, part of that group as well. Yeah, I'd providing love to. value. Love to. Okay, so coming back to the topic. Mm, so yeah, yeah. Uh, number one step again. I, I will keep repeating. You know, yeah, some sure. people don't watch the full video. So you're saying, what's your passion? Finalize your niche, your message. Number yeah. two, get on to podcasts. Make a list of your hundred favorite uh, podcasts in your niche. Yeah, and then contact them and get uh, them to interview you or get them. 
get on their podcast. And yeah. the next one is then start creating uh, digital products, which is yeah. audio, video, ebooks, etc. And ebooks is a joke. Like you can create one in two days. You know, writing oh. thirty pages. <laughs> I, I could create. I'll create you a digital, a professionally looked digital ebook within minutes. <laughs> And these days, there's their software and so many other things. Exactly. So, I, so my, obviously, my company is a training and coaching company. I also own a publishing company as well. Um, so, yeah, we do. We, we've got software that does it very, very good, professionally made uh, ebooks. Um, and although my business, let's say it's a training and coaching company, I've had it, let's say, since 2008, I use ebooks and low cost digital products to build that company. If we look at mm. Russell Bronson, if people don't know Russell Bronson, Russell Bronson's the guy behind ClickFunnels, an incredible guy, absolute genius. Mm. ClickFunnels is a software company. Russell has built a billion pound or whatever it is software company in four years, and he's done it through ebooks and digital products. Mm -hmm. They are the most cost effective products that you will ever make. They are made once and they are as good as 100% profit. So that's why if you go on a podcast and you get interviewed, you can use it as a product. It's mm. like this. I don't know if I'm going to get access to this. I don't know. If I get access to this, um, the fact that it's a free product as such, I can give it away. I can turn around to my list and say, right, here's an interview. This is what I've spoke about. Go and get it. Mm. This, this is a product. It's free. It's a free product. So, oh, you know, creating digital products are huge you have to be thinking about creating digital assets they will be here way after you are or way after we are mm -hmm. and well, one other thing i like i just wanted to add a couple of points here mm. this consulting coaching speaking business the mm. most amazing thing about that is obviously you're following your passion you're sharing mm. your passion your life story obviously you're te teaching people as you mentioned, 100% profit. No other business model is like that. No. No other no. business model. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, e-commerce, you have to have cost of getting the product and then, you know, supplier costs and then all the management, exactly. etc. This one, you create a product, probably takes you a couple of days a week or even yeah, if, it, exactly. it, even if it takes you two weeks to a month. It's, it's, yeah. 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 Once it's done, and then it's hundred percent profit. Exactly. So, so you, you th I had a conversation with a friend of mine this morning who's who's in business. We pretty much started together, and uh, and I was saying about the my overheads. The cost to run my business each month is around one hundred and eighty pound. One hundred and eighty pound. Now, when I sold my first ever ebook back in two thousand and eight, I sold one hundred and twenty eight copies and made just over six grand. Mm. You know, what other business? I don't, I'm at home. I don't have staff. I have five people who work for me as a partnership. I don't have any staff. I don't employ anybody. You know, it's like, it's the most cost effective business that you will ever have. I do my, mm. my coaching online. I do my training uh, online. I do the consultancy online. Um, yes, obviously, live events when I'm traveling and doing workshops, they, I go to them. They're obviously live events. But it's the lowest cost business that you are ever going to have, and I just use digital products to um, to build the training business. Okay, you, well, one of the points you mentioned there, you, you're saying you have students all over the world. Mm. Uh, did you say eleven different countries? Yeah, it's about eleven or twelve different countries now. Yeah. One thing, um, I mean, one of my passion is helping people, especially in in the developing world. Mm. And, you know, whenever as a marketers, we know when we're marketing stuff, we're, you know, going for UK, US, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, mm. and South Africa, Africa, probably. But there's a huge, huge demand in these developing countries. And, you know, like gurus and all these experts, they don't really exist, those countries. Do you think they can have something like this? Yeah. I mean, you, you look, I, I, I'm very fortunate. We've got a family home in, in India um which is beautiful so you know india is very it's like my second home you think when i first started like i say 12 years ago or so facebook and that wasn't out there they didn't have access to facebook mm -hmm. now india i 
think is like the third or fourth top following country of mine. Um, All right. So, you know, it's they are if you think of a lot of outsourcers these days, they're in India. Web developers, graphic designers, SEO. Um, you know, so these countries are all over it. There's some very, very clever, very intelligent uh, future entrepreneurs out in these countries. It's amazing. The reason why they've come and followed me is because I constantly tell my story. I didn't just tell my story once. You know, I get booked to speak on stage to tell my story. If I go into the full story, it's anything from a 45 minute to a 60 minute keynote to tell my full story. Um, I get paid to do it. I'm constantly telling my story. So kind of going back in regards to like steps and, you know, once you've created your product and you've told your story, the next thing you want to do from a marketing point of view is get as much PR as you possibly can. Unfortunately, you can't see it. There's a frame above me there. So above this wall, just above my seat, uh, is different pictures of media, PR, press releases. Um, and that is the key strategy. That is what we do for our customers. So we do the process to date, what I've said. Um, then I have fantastic SEO, press writing and distribution experts who work for me. Um, and once we've got your um, story um, and we're ready with your ebook or your book, we will publish that story um, all over the world. And that ebook will have sections in there and details in there, taking people to your Facebook group or wherever it is. And it is the easiest, the fastest way possible that any business will grow respect results and revenue through mm. pr it is absolutely amazing okay can, can you go into a bit more detail of pr well what mm. what exactly that entails and how people can do that okay so pr obviously old school press releases um so if you think now that this day and age the internet is full of fake news isn't it Yes. Um, and especially sadly, although what's happening right now isn't fake, it's it's still pretty depressing. Um, magazines, business magazines, whatever magazines, whatever niche you're in, press releases, sorry, whatever niche you're in, they are always looking for positive stories and interesting stories. They want real life stuff. They don't want. Sorry, when when you say they, who you're referring so the, to? Here? The media. The media. So it's all media, it's a newspaper, TV channel. Yeah, and... exactly that. Go to your local paper, um, go to local radio stations, find magazines within your niche. So for uh, you and I, it would be things like the Entrepreneur Magazine and things like that. Um, Forbes are always looking. So um, we contact them, rewrite press releases. Uh, we've got, uh, me and my team, We oh, God knows how many we've got, five, six, seven hundred um, top, top media contacts. Our overall media database uh, within my company is over 17,000 media contacts uh, from UK, America, and Australia. Wow. Uh, so we put the stories out. We distribute it online. We get it into Google News. We get it into NBC, Fox, if we can. We're affiliated with them. Um, and that there is a fantastic way again to grow trust the mm -hmm. biggest thing that we are looking for in business right now is to build trust as quickly as possible especially in the business world because like we said at the start of this call every man and their dog now is suddenly a friggin entrepreneur most people can't even spell the word entrepreneur let alone know, know what one is mm -hmm. but yet they say they're an entrepreneur they are clueless sadly um so they have to build trust as quickly as possible and if you can get a good, compelling story in the media, they love it and get it distributed. And within that digital product that you've created, within that press release, you will put a website and they can go and get that ebook or whatever. Then when they get that ebook from the press release, they read that ebook. Inside that ebook is a link to your Facebook group. Mm. They click there, they go into your Facebook group. It's a very simple strategy. And okay, can... and, and TR, when, when you send away, let's say you have, let's say, uh, I'm one of your clients. So mm. I ask you, my dear friend, Paul, I need PR. So typically, the process is my life story and everything is sorted. And then you send PR. What, what would be 
results of that PR? Some would would I get any interviews or would that yep. be featured so somewhere? Our, our yeah, our aim would to to be to get you featured, obviously, in top magazines, top publications. Um, we also write it as well, so it's very SEO keyword driven. So it will be all over the internet. Um, but our aim would be to get you interviews in top media, top publications, get you into like things like Forbes magazines or whatever your niche is, um, get you onto TV stations, radio stations. Um, I guarantee as well that a lot of podcasters will get hold of it. Um, so it's just, it's a fantastic way. So if you imagine that on mass scale, mm. that's how you know, it can happen quickly. So for us, you know, we always say that we'll help you grow a fri uh, grow a thriving business within 90 days or less because wow. we know from those those press releases how powerful they can be and the impact it can have and then that's why i say sadly you can't see it but the press releases are above me i don't know if i can angle my camera a little bit there's so there's a few there um <clears throat> so those press releases again it's social proof so you can then, if you're going to be doing more marketing, you can show that the social proof. You know, it's like, man, I help people write and publish books. The only reason why I showed my books at the beginning, not to show off, I don't care if anyone buys it, but there's no point in me doing an interview talking about how to create and publish books if I've never written or published a book. <laughs> exactly. And that, is, and that is the biggest thing that I find in, in the industry. Too many people are using the whole fake it until you make it rubbish. Um, and I don't believe in that. You know, I'm mm. very ethical. I'm very honest. Uh, I'm like I say, I'm dyslexic, not massively, but I'm dyslexic. As I said, I'm 43. Only read my first book when I was age 28. I'm now just in the process of writing my fourth book. It works. All right. So this is, you know, it's worked for me. It's worked for thousands of others. And that's what I do. And I find sadly with a, what a lot of marketers these days, um, they're doing what they've learned not what they've done hmm. and if you don't learn it properly it's not going to work and that's why there's a huge lack of trust in the business in the business area now uh, because nobody well very little people don't trust people so if you can create huge amounts of trust and respect as quickly as you can through media through great press releases people are going to work with you a lot quicker all right okay so i'm trying to wrap this up now so number one, again, coming back to niche, your passion. Mm. Number two, uh, podcasters. Your, no, number two, own your story. Be proud own of your story, your journey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, number three, get onto podcasts. Number four, PR. What's yeah. next? Mm. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so that, that's in a nutshell is a business model for uh, coaches, speakers, uh, consultants, yeah. And uh, and in your experience, so someone right now mm. listening to us, watching us, uh, they they have passion. They want to start, get started. So what sort of results they can expect if they, for example, follow your whole uh, blueprint, if you mm. like, uh, to the end. So you're saying in 90 days, uh, what, what sort of results they can expect? Your, the results that you'll gain is that you will grow huge amounts of respect and authority within your industry. Mm -hmm. You'll grow fantastic revenue. And you'll get results because, like I say, you'll be getting leads and uh, things like that. In regards to financial results, everyone's different. Um, if the business is set up correctly, then who knows? You know, one thing that you want to do after all of this is take all of this and make it into decent courses, online courses, um, and sell. Start selling them for at least two grand. Uh, create mastermind groups for you know ten, twenty, thirty, fifty grand, hundred grand. Um, but this is the core basics to get going. So it really does depend what results you want. I speak to so many people, and when I first started in this, let's say in two thousand and eight, I used to see everyone was promising to build you a five figure business. Then it went to a six figure, then seven, then eight figure. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mm. As I said, la last year I trained over three and a half thousand people. Wow. I would probably say 95% of those would never ever want a seven or eight figure business. Some of them would want a six figure. They are petrified. 
And the reason mm. being is because when you look at society and the way we've come into this world, we are taught again, you know, obviously you go to school, college, A-levels, university and all that usual rubbish. You're going to get a job. <clears throat> I think about a year ago, the UK average salary went up to just over 29 grand. 29,250 pound is the UK average salary. Yeah. Okay. So if I said to someone, I mean, most people are probably earning around about between 20 and 23 grand, I think, 24 grand realistically, unless you're in central London. Um, but 29 grand is the average UK salary. Hmm. So if I suddenly said, so that means what, they're taking home, I don't know, two grand a month, something like that, 1,800 quid a month, I don't know, maths is rubbish. So mm. if somebody mentally is used to taking home 1,800 pound a month, and I then suddenly turn around and said, I'm going to grow you a business, it's going to bring in 10, 15, 20 grand a month. As much as their initial thought to be like, wow, that's amazing. When they mm -hmm. think about it, they then think, shit, what have I got to do to do that? That sounds like hard work. Yeah, but Paul, this is crazy. What you're telling me, you're telling me that anyone who's got some sort of passion, yeah, they can, rather than you know working their backside off in a typical job, they can have within 90 days a business model, a business developed, which can make them five figures, six figures, seven figures, or even yeah. eight figures. Yeah. That is crazy. Why would anyone then want to go and do a normal job? They wouldn't. But what I'm saying to people in regards to results, the reason why I said that is, and I'm not telling people to go and get a job. What I'm saying is financially, there's so much online these days promising you all this riches, promise you seven, eight figure businesses. Most people don't actually want that. So one thing I say when I first start working with people, I will turn around and say, right, what's the best salary that you have earned in your life? So prime mm. example, I was doing an event last year um, and one of the attendees, lovely girl, mid twenties, um, set up a little um, accessory making business where she was making accessories for kids and dogs um, purely because there was a manufacturer, fabric manufacturer near her and all the loose ends got sent off to um, oh, scrap. What are they called it? I forgot what they called it now, but went landfill. So it went to landfill, mm. which she hated. She contacted the manufacturer and said, I know I can't take all of the fabric, but could I take a certain amount? So, you know, it's not all going to landfill. I said, yeah, of course you can. So she makes accessories out of loose ends. So when I had a one-to-one -one with her, I said, right, what's your goal? What's your goal for this business? Her first initial answer was to figure out how I can turn this into a million pound business. And I mm. went, okay. I <laughs> said, so you want a factory? You want machines? You want employees? You want insurance? You want PAYE? You want all the overhead? You want the stress, the hassle, and everything else, do you? I could see the color draining from her face, Shaquille. So <laughs> I then turned around and said, let me ask you a personal question. I said, what's the best salary you've ever earned in your life? And instantly she was like 23 grand a year. She was smiling. Her eyes were sparkling. I said, and how did that make you feel when you was earning that? What was life like? She said, it was amazing. Mm. I had one full two week holiday a week, uh, a year. I had little holidays. My kids had clothes. We had a great life. I went, and that was on 23 grand a year. She went, yep. I went, so if we get your business to 30 grand a year, that will be 7,000 pound more than you've ever earned in your life. Now, suddenly you're financially independent and you mm. can do that with your business without any overheads, without any staff, without any stress machines, factory and everything else. How would that make you feel? She's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I went, there you go. That's the first goal. The first goal was to get you to 30 grand a year. So whoever I work with, whether they've come out of a job and they're earning 50 grand, 60 grand, whatever, I will then turn and look at that and go, OK, let's get your business. So it's earning 10,000 pound more than what you're used to earning because then you're financially independent. If you lose one or two clients, who cares? You're still earning more than you've ever earned before. If we can do that with our first goal, then we can grow and scale and we can go to the next level. Unfortunately, there's so many people with big dreams, which I love, I have big dreams, but people try and start a business with big dreams mm. rather than start a business from the basics. Mm. The basics are building a solid foundation and being realistic. Work towards the big dreams. Don't start off with big dreams.
It causes unnecessary stress, anxiety, depression, and I guarantee that most people, if they do that, won't even last a year. And the majority of startups close within a year. Right, I, Paul, I love it. Like you, you are uh, probably the most honest guy I've ever spoken about. You know about these topics, entrepreneurship, because normally people promise one million. They start with six figure, seven figure, and eight figure. And you're saying no. Your target should be if you're making thirty grand. Your target should be have a business which makes you thirty, thirty five k first of all, and yeah. that frees you up. And then if you get to that level, then you can quite easily go. 10 grand exactly. more, 50, exactly. 100. And yeah. so, yeah, it's uh, it's lovely. Yes. Now, no. sorry, if no people problem. want to follow you, people want to mm. see, get part of, uh, become part of your tribe, if they want to learn yeah. from you, if you want to access to your courses, where do they go? How do they do it? Uh, the easiest way is just to go to the website, which is the freedomlifestyleacademy.com. So it's freedomlifestyleacademy.com. Uh, they can go on there. Uh, there's a button right on the top. If they click on there, it will access them into my Facebook group completely free. Um, I do at least one live weekly training every week. Um, I've now written and published over 100 ebooks. Um, all of those ebooks go in that group for free. Every week, I'm putting at least one or two in there. Um, as I said, I give about 80% of my stuff I give away for free. So mm. there's only about 500 people in there, but it's a fantastic tight knit community. Um, my overall following is about 40,000, but my philosophy in business is very much based around building it on quality rather than quantity. I mm. prefer to serve quality people than not. And again, one of the things I will say to people, if you can work to get your first 1000 true fans, uh, which was an article or book come out over a few years ago, Work on getting your first thousand true fans. Once you've got them, your business is done. You can build a six figure fit business easily with a thousand true fans. So, yeah, if they go to freedomlifestyleacademy.com, they can get into my Facebook group and I'd welcome them with open arms. Great. And, well, let's, you know, I would say let's get together again. And mm. I would probably, um, uh, you know, we choose a subject like if you're saying, you know, you, you're creating two, three, I don't know how many ebooks a week or within two weeks. That's something probably people would love to, you know, learn how to do yeah. that quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, and also uh, because, of, you know, there's so many projects I'm involved in currently and I can see the value. And there are so many people probably would be looking for your PR uh, services and uh, the cool. whole proof blueprint as well. So definitely okay. keep in touch. I love that, Shaquille. Thank you. Uh, lovely to talk to you. And let's, you know, make things happen. And I would say anyone watching this, please do follow uh, Paul. Look into his stuff. You know, most of his stuff is free anyway. And uh, you, you will learn a lot. And if you really have passion about life, you want to do something with your passion, want to transform it into a successful, profitable business, Paul is your guy. So. Uh, Heads up, go on to uh, Paul's website and uh, follow him. And I think, yeah, you, you can quite easily on to a winner. Thank you so very Paul, much. So, Paul, thank you very much. Really appreciate this. Really good advice. And I love your blueprint. And definitely we'll be in touch again. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless, mate. Really appreciate it. Thanks.